So in today's video, I'm going to discuss some tips that I found useful, some things that you can do to help to keep from draining your battery so fast overnight when there's no sun out. Now it's easy to remain off grid if you have a decent sized array when the sun's out. No question about that. The question is, can you remain off grid when that sun goes down? It's 90, 100 degrees outside. You've got to run air conditioning. Do you have enough battery storage? And can you run your house efficiently enough to not drain those batteries overnight? Now, especially over here in Texas, where I'm at, Central Texas, right now as I'm making this video here in July of 2024, it is about 97 degrees right now. So we're having to run AC all day and then a little bit into the night, at least in our living room, which I'll discuss further in this video. Now, the system that I'm using, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I'm using the Solark 15K all-in-one hybrid inverter. I have 30 kilowatt hours of storage of EG4LL batteries, and I also have 19,200 watts of solar panels that I have ground mounted. Now, if you are interested in the same system I use here, I did make a diagram PDF, like a wiring schematic that you can download for free that shows all the equipment I used with links and all the parts I use for the installation as well, from wire size down to the conduit I use to connect these things together. And you can download that at solarpdfdownload.com. So just in a nutshell, here's how my system works. So I have, like I said, 19,000 watts roughly of solar panels ground mounted, that power comes right in here to the Solark 15K inverter. It goes from here directly into my home panel. So that's what's different about this system is the Solark 15K has a 200 amp pass through. So you can go from your electric meter directly into your Solark here. And then from here, you can go right into the two big main feeds in your home panel, powering the whole house. And obviously when the sun's out, my solar inverter here converts that DC power to AC, sends it right into my house to be able to use. And then any excess energy goes right into my battery bank to be used at night. So I have this thing programmed to where it uses solar and batteries 100% of the time, doesn't use anything from the grid. Though I do have a grid connection here just as backup. So if my batteries get drained to 20%, it'll automatically go back to grid for just a little bit until the sun comes back up and the power and the sun brings in enough power to power my home and charge my batteries back up. So that in a nutshell is how my system works. Now, as I mentioned, I have 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage. So where I'm at here in Central Texas, from dusk till dawn, you have about 12 hours or a 12 hour period where you have no sunlight at all, right? You have no solar production. And then really you only have five hours a day when you're getting that four or five hours, you're getting that peak production and then it tapers off. So you get a little bit in the morning, you get a little bit late in the evening. For the purposes of this video, just to make it simple, I'm just going with, hey, 12 hours of no power at all, and we'll see how long your batteries can last on that based on your usage, your power usage in your home. So just simple math says if I have 30 kilowatt hours of storage, you divide that by 12 hours, that's roughly 2.5 kilowatt hours I can average basically per hour at night during that 12 hour period, and then my batteries will be 100% drained. But I like to not run my batteries lower than a 20% state of charge. So that means I really have closer to two kilowatt hours that I can use on average per hour overnight before my batteries are drained to the point where I'm gonna go back to grid as a backup source. Now to average two kilowatt hours, basically per hour for that 12 hour period, no problem if you're just running refrigerators, lights, TV, internet. I mean, even probably cooking on an induction cooktop, no problem at all. But now if you throw a big four ton whole home air conditioning into the mix, or even a mini split, you know, a 24K BTU unit, you're gonna drain those batteries a lot quicker. So having 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage for me is enough to remain off grid overnight. Now I do have some tips and tricks that help me. And even in the summertime, when there's air conditioning running, we have AC running, I can still do it. Now it does take a little bit of power planning or power budgeting. Now keep in mind that I do have energy efficient appliances. So I have, a 24K BTU mini split. And I've got a video that I'll link at the end of this, a card at the end of this video where you can watch the video on the exact appliances I use. Or I wrote an ebook that you can download that goes into all the appliances I use, basically everything I've learned since I've started trying to be off grid or less dependent on the energy grid for my power. And you can check that book out at solar-ebook.com. So the energy efficient appliances I use are a 24K BTU mini split, a 9K BTU mini split in the bedroom, 
I've got a couple 5,000 BTU wall window air conditionings that don't use very much power. I also have a hybrid like heat pump water heater, which saves a ton. And I also have a heat pump washer dryer combo that is also very energy efficient. And we cook on induction cooktops as well. So with that in mind, now let's get into the tips that I've learned. So here's tip number one that I found really helps to extend how long your batteries can last overnight. Now this tip pertains to summertime, but you can also use it in the reverse for winter time as well. When the sun is out, I run air conditioning nonstop. I will get my house as cold as my air conditioners can get it, which is typically around 68, 69 degrees when it's you know high 90s out outside here in Texas. Now I have a 24K Mr. Cool mini split that I run in the living room that kind of keeps my whole house cool. Now the back bedrooms might not get, it'll probably be about five, maybe six degrees warmer than the living room, but I use that because it's really energy efficient. Now I also do have a four ton traditional AC unit that most of you have in your houses, at least here in the US. And I'll run that once my batteries get near full, I'll turn that on as well and get my house as cold as I can get it. Then as it gets later in the afternoon, I'll turn off my big four ton traditional air conditioning unit and just run the mini split. Then right around sundown, my house is around 68, 69 degrees. Maybe it's at 70, 71. I'll turn off the mini split at that point and just let my home slowly start to warm up throughout the evening. But by the time it's about 10, 11 p.m. at night, it's about 75, 76 inside my house. I really don't need AC at that point, at least not in the living room. And if it does get to on really hot days, it could get like 79, 80 degrees in my house right around 11 p.m. I might turn the mini split on for a few more minutes, but I don't have to run it that much because I used I used all that energy in the earlier part of the day to really get my house cold. And then in the bedrooms, we have a 9K BTU mini split that we can run in our bedroom that's really efficient. And then in the guest bedrooms, we just have, like I mentioned, the 5,000 BTU window units. And those run on average around, I don't know, 300 kilowatt hours, probably averaging out um, overnight. So it doesn't use more than, I don't know, about two, maybe three kilowatt hours at the most per one of those little uh, 5,000 BTU window AC units. So that can keep me basically off grid overnight if I manage it properly that way. Now, if I was running that mini split, which runs on about 1,000 to 1,500 watts, kind of on average, that would drain my battery faster and I wouldn't be able to make it probably overnight. I still use probably five or six kilowatt hours. So that's how I can do it and still run AC. Now, air conditioning and heating are by far the biggest draws on your typical American home here in the US. So using this type of energy management that I do with my AC and heat, it's very important if you have a limited budget to buy batteries. Now, I want to double my battery bank and I am in process of doing that. I'd rather have 60 kilowatt hours to, or I'm really comfortable to make it through the night. But for those of you on a budget, you can still use this kind of management tool to help you get through it. And tip number two, do your laundry during the day when the sun's out. The washer doesn't use that much electricity, but your traditional electric dryer uses a ton. 4,000, 5,000 watts while it's running, that will drain your batteries very quickly. Now run that only during the day or get a heat pump washer dryer combo like I have. You can run that at night. That's not that big of a draw. It is nice to finally be able to do laundry at night. I'll, I'll definitely say that. Um, my wife didn't like having to always run it during the day. So that helps tremendously. And again, I'll have a video at the end of this that goes into details on all those appliances. And tip number three, cook before the sun goes down. So in the summertime, that's very easy to do, right? When it's light till eight, nine o'clock at night. In the wintertime, that's a little more difficult. But also in the wintertime, at least here in Texas, I use way less energy because we have a lot milder winters than a lot of you up there who live up north. So we don't have to run that much heating except for maybe a couple weeks out of the year. So I find using my induction cooktops, they're pretty energy efficient anyways. And using a crock or a crock pot or an instant pot that we use to cook meals, those don't use that much electricity. So it's no problem in the winter to cook at night. In the summertime, we try to make sure we do that during the daylight hours to make it just easier on our system. Because again, we need that spare capacity in our batteries to run air conditioning all night. And tip number four, if you have a hot water heater that's a hybrid, that's a heat pump model like I do, when the sun is out, push that thing hard. With the click of a button, I have an app, I can cook my water all the way to 140 degrees to the max. So in essence, when my batteries are full on my solar system, I can store that excess energy in hot water in my water heater. I have a 40 gallon hot water heater. So when you heat your water to 140 degrees, 
it lasts a lot longer because you can't shower at 140 degrees, it would scald you. So you're using a lot more cold water mixed in and using less hot water out of your tank. So I'll store that there. And then once the sun goes down, I'll use my phone. I'll drop that right down to back to 120 degrees. But that 140 degree water is in there for the rest of the night, at least till we take all the showers. And what's great about the hot water heater I have is I can set that all on my app. Let's say I can tell it at noon, I wanted to heat the water up to 140 degrees. It'll do that and then it'll shut that off and go back to 120 degrees let's say it's 7 p.m. or wherever I want to set it. That's the beautiful thing about this hybrid hot water heater. You can adjust it. You can even turn it off if you want to use no electricity at all and then have it fire right back up in the morning. All right, tip number five. Now this probably doesn't apply to most of you, but it definitely will apply to some of you and it absolutely applies to me. So I have five homes on my property and all of those homes are fed by a deep water well. It's about 460 feet deep. And we also have a above ground 240 volt water pressure pump. So there's a pump at the bottom of that well that's 240 volts, having to pump that water up 460 feet. And then I have to have another pump, which is a 240 volt pump, variable speed that pressurizes the water to the whole system to all five of those homes. And being that I live in a very rural area and I'm worried about the power grid not being as reliant as it should be, I wanted to make sure my solar system powers that well and that water pressure pump as well. So we always have water no matter what. Now, as you can imagine, running water to five homes, people using irrigation, drip lines for gardens, um, it takes a lot of power. So I have 9,000 gallons of water storage. Now, what I do is we put a timer, 240 volt timer, your standard like pool pump timer. So I only have that pump running basically from 9 a.m. to about 8 p.m. So basically during daylight hours, maybe a little bit into an hour, or so at night, but at night it shuts off the well pump. So my well is no longer putting water into the tanks. We'll just slowly drain those tanks down overnight, but we have 9,000 gallons of storage. So we're not nearly coming close to using all of that water overnight. And in the morning when the sun comes up, it goes right back on and pumps water back into those tanks. Now with the variable speed pump, the beautiful thing about that is it's variable speed. So it could use anywhere from about thousand watts to about six thousand watts that I've seen the draw on my system here from that variable speed pump. So when we're pushing a bunch of water out to the gardens, it'll run closer to that six thousand watts for I mean maybe 30, 45 minutes, and then it goes right back down and shuts off really. And then during the day, I mean it barely runs at all for showers, washing clothes, it doesn't hardly use much of that pump at all to pressurize the system and keep it pressurized. It's really only running sprinklers. So what do we do? We set our sprinkler valves to turn on at about 9 a.m. Again, you're probably seeing a theme here. Use the power when the sun is out. The batteries are the most expensive part of your system. So if you can find a way to push all that energy that you're using towards the sunlight hours, you won't have to spend as much on your batteries. So hopefully these tips have helped you out and gave you something to think about at least to not have to start with as much battery storage up front. You could just kind of get started like I did here with 30 kilowatt hours of storage and as your budget allows, Buy more batteries but this will help you become less reliant on the grid using using your backup whether that's a generator or whether that's like me the grid which i also have a generator also just in case which i'll put out a video here soon um, on how to connect that generator to the solark or the eg4 18k pv inverter which i have right next to me here that i'm about to hook up so make sure you subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell so you can see alerts when i put those videos out make sure to like this video as well it really helps and we'll see you all in the next video